Today, we're going to be talking about nutrient lockout, pH lockout, what causes them and how to fix them. When you're mixing and measuring your newts, there's a lot that can go wrong. The concentrations, but specifically the ratios. If you do it wrong, you waste your nutrients, you waste your money, and your plants don't get what they need in the end. We're going to get into all that, but before we do, this video is brought to you by Real Growers Grow Dots. Grow Dots are absolutely the easiest way to feed your plants. You mix Grow Dots in once at the beginning of your grow, and they feed all the way to harvest. You don't have to worry about nutrient burn, nutrient Lockout Grow Dots does all the hard work for you. Go over, check them out over at realgrowers.com. And while you're over there, use coupon code SCOTTY420 and save 20% off your first order. All right, I see you ready. Come on, let's jump into it, man. Okay, so assume that I'm not just going to use Grow Dots and take the easy way out. Sure. Uh, I do want to know about nutrients. And for me as a new grower, this is one of the most intimidating aspects because I see so many ways that this can go wrong. Sure. Well, thanks to the internet, this doesn't have to be intimidating. There's lots of great information out there. And do me a favor, hit this picture if you would really quick. All right, so I've got this nutrient availability chart pulled up and tell me what I'm looking at here. You're looking at all the essential nutrients. There's nitrogen, there's your big ones, phosphorus, potassium. You got calcium, magnesium, sulfur. And you can see where the fattest part is where they can be absorbed. That's the, the right pH range for them to be absorbed. And you can see there's some, some have fat parts in the beginning, some have them at the end. But if you go between six and seven, if you look at that and you just draw a line between six and seven, you're getting most of that. You're getting the, the fat part of most of those nutrients. So... Okay, so this these numbers, four, five, six, seven, these are the base and the acid uh, pH levels? Yeah, how, how acidic or basic it is. And the lower you get, the, the, more acidic. Uh, the more acidic. pH is the potential of hydrogen. It has to do with hydrogen, ions, and all mm. that. That's okay. about all you need to know about that. <laughs> all right, and so I'm looking and I'm seeing like uh, phosphorus, especially if my pH... And is this pH of my water, pH of my soil, pH, pH of, the of your soil? Okay. But of course, the water is how you determine the pH of the soil. Gotcha. Okay, so if my pH of my soil is underneath six, there's no ability for my plant to absorb phosphorus, phosphorus. Sure. at all. Sure. Same thing with magnesium. Mm -hmm. But then I'm looking at some of the other ones like iron, and if I go above seven, then I start locking it out, and it, my plant can't absorb the iron past that? There's absolutely a sweet spot, and thank God it's pretty wide. The range between 6 and 7, as far as pH goes, is a pretty wide range. It's not hard to keep it in there. Okay, and I've seen you actually test the water. Sure. Here you have some kind of like... You, you drip something in the water and it changes yeah. color. Anyone that had a swimming pool growing up had the little uh, test kit, tested for chlorine on mm. one side and acidity on the other side. It's a, it's pretty much the same thing. We're testing for the acidity. It's you drop a few drops in the, uh, you know, you got like a little mini test tube. You drop a few drops in there. You look at the color and you just match the color up. It should be somewhere in the green area, at least on my tests. Okay, and so... If I'm doing that, I've got my water, I mix in those drops, I right. see that either my water is too acidic or maybe too base. Sure. Uh, how do I fix that? Yeah, traditionally, you would go buy a bottle of pH up and a bottle of pH down. The down is going to be the acid. The up is going to be the base. And you would continually take tests and measure them and uh, and do it that way. So if, if my water is, say, too acidic, then I'm going to add some of the pH, pH up. up. Now, don't forget, you got to add too much pH up, so you got to add some pH down again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think they use phosphoric acid to bring it down. Uh, is it potassium hydroxide? There, there's some crazy chemicals that they use that are really high in pH that they'll use to bring it up. And if I go to my local grow store, will sure. they know what? Okay, and they'll be able to hook me up and help me out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm probably $30 a gallon for each. Yeah. Okay, so I feel like I have a pretty good idea on how to deal with pH lockout. And now I need to understand something else that you said you were talking about. Yeah. Antagonism, I think. Yeah. Yeah, antagonism is there's only a certain amount of spots for this nutrient to be held onto a soil particle. Soil okay. particle is a finite amount of space. So to have these on, if you, you have to have them in the right proportion. Okay, if, let me, let me sure. ask you. 
So I pour my nutrient into my soil. The soil holds on to that nutrient and makes sure that it gets to the plant. Otherwise, it would just flush right out. Yes, and it does that through, I won't get too deep into it, but it has these charges that hold it. It's, okay. it's, it if you don't have those charges, then there's nothing holding the soil. There's positive that bonds to negative, and just like the earth's a magnet, so is the soil, man. Okay, and you were you were kind of explaining it to me like there's a certain amount of seats available, or yeah. a certain amount of slots available yep. Yep. in the soil to hold the nutrient. Yep. And then I kind of got lost. Help me out. Explain it to me. I, I try to be really simple. You might hear about CEC, cation exchange capacity. Mm -hmm. Cations are the nutrients, and the nutrients have to be able to be exchanged. If they're stuck on that soil particle, no good. So they have to be exchanged. They actually get exchanged using hydrogen. So that's why if there's not a, too much hydrogen, potential of hydrogen, pH, or there's too little, that's why it messes up the nutrient exchange. Okay, and you were saying something about if... I have too much of one. It mm. takes up all those seeds. Yeah. And then the other nutrients that my plant might need don't have the ability to bond onto the soil. Absolutely. We're talking about positive and negative bonds. And if you had, and there's double positive bonds, a double positive bond will knock off a, a negative or just, I'm sorry, it'll knock off a single positive bond. So uh, if you've got something like sodium, that is super bonded on there, you have to get you have to knock it off and you have to push that out of the way and get the nutrient that you want in there. Okay, and you were talking about uh, if I mix my nutrients incorrectly and I don't pour them in in the right proportion. Sure. If I have too much of one, it makes it to where other ones that I need don't yeah. have the ability to stick. Yeah, I mean, think of magnet site. If you've got a magnet site that pulls and I put 100% nitrogen in there, 100% whatever, the plant doesn't need 100% of one thing. It needs a nice balance of it. So, yeah, it's important to get that right. And that's why a lot of a lot of success with nutrients comes down to making sure you're getting the right proportions. Yes. And uh, most of the nutrient companies, they kind of give you instructions on what to mix and how much of each. Yes, and the, there's a reason why they're in those bottles, too. It's three separate bottles. It's because of the ratios that it has to be. Okay, and if we get the ratios right, none of uh, one one nutrient isn't going to kick out all the other nutrients. They're all going to be able to fit perfectly. Right, the ratio of nutrients to each other. That's okay. what we're talking. That's the NPK. That's why it's, it has to be legally on every bottle. That's why usually it's the biggest thing on there because it's important. Those ratios are important. Gotcha, and, and that's where you see the three different numbers that yep. are on. Okay. Yep, the N, the P, and the K. Okay, cool. All right, so let's talk about some things that I can do to make sure that my plants are getting all the nutrients. Obviously, we just mentioned making sure that we're mixing the right proportions. And right. A, a, a lot of the high-quality nutrients, they make that pretty easy for us. What are some other things that we can do to make sure that those nutrients are actually getting to our plants? First off, of course, there's adding soil microbes. Soil microbes were a complete game changer for me. And the idea with soil microbes is you don't have to be completely perfect with your pH because the soil microbes themselves are able to secrete enzymes or uh, hydrogen hydrogen ions actually that can change their own pH they regular regulate their own pH uh, just just to stay alive so those microbes are kind of like at the root zone and if the pH isn't perfect they yep. can help regulate the pH yep exactly and one of the other cool things about microbes is they're sticky I use the bacteria on your teeth that grow just grow just overnight but the microbes are sticky so that when there's nutrients, it sticks to those soil particles. It makes it so they can't just be washed out. So they hold on to. Yeah. So if the soil can't hold on to all the microbes or all the nutrients you need, if you've got those soil microbes, they help hold on to the nutrients as well. Yes, exactly. And then. How do they release those microbes when your plant needs them? That's why they call it the soil food web. The tiniest microbe will have a tiny piece of nutrient stick to it. A bigger microbe will eat that. Maybe a bigger one will eat that. What they excrete out is plant food or enzymes or things that the plant can use. 
Hey, I just want to reiterate, when we're talking about organics and breaking them down, the reason organics have to be broken down with microbes is because those particles are huge. An organic particle, a protein, it's huge. It has to be broken down into these little constituents that the plant can assimilate. The microbe eating it and then getting eaten again and uh, the enzymes that are, the enzymatic activity that's happening there, all that breaks those giant organic molecules down into this palatable uh, form for the plant to eat. Okay, so if I'm feeding organic nutrients, I need those microbes in there to help break it down and make yep. it plant available. Yep. If I'm feeding synthetic, the microbes are in there and they help keep those nutrients at the root zone instead of just flushing them out. It's a regulator at that point, yeah. You know, okay. When we talk about these microbes, they're colonizing the rhizosphere, that area where the root meets the soil, that 120th of an inch there where all these exchanges are going on. You don't just overload the port. You don't just have ship after ship coming up. It's all timed correctly and it's, it's coordinated. Okay, so I feel like this video should have brought, been brought to us by Recharge rather than Grow Dots, but they work Recharge. great. To, but it's they, they work great together. If you just have you know all the the tankers just showing up all day every day, it's an issue. Mm -hmm. You know, Recharge is, is the buffer. It's the it's the dock master. Okay, cool. So to make sure my plants are getting all the nutrients I need, number one, I want to keep my pH at what level? Between six and seven is safe. That's all a good right. safe general level. And I also want to make sure that my plants are getting the right ratio of yep. nutrients because yep. in the wrong ratio, they're going to be pushing each other out of chairs and it's going to be bad. I was falling asleep to this. I'm thinking if I could only have three things in my refrigerator, I have like, you know, uh, meat, milk, and no, meat, fruit, and butter, right? Mm -hmm. If I eat all three of those things in the exact same proportions, I'm, I'm going to be in trouble. I'm going to have bad cholesterol, you know? <laughs> yeah, we got carbs, uh, proteins, and fat. They got nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium as, as their major building blocks. So we have to get those in at the right proportions, or else we might stay alive, but we're not going to be healthy. Right, and we want our plants to thrive, not thrive. just stay alive. That's right, that's right. These are the things that I pay attention to in order to get the most amount of nutrients into my plants. But what about y'all? You got any tips? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, please hit that like button, click that subscribe button, and check out the other couple YouTube videos that are recommended.